So um, I'm going to start off by explaining what I'm about to do. Uh, I want to explain why I do this and why a lot of us do what we do. Um, because you need to start off with why. Right? And maybe the best way to express why is with a manifesto. And uh, I think it's manifesto season. It's time to reconsider everything and to ask that question, why are we doing this and what are we heading to? So uh, yesterday, uh, for this event, but also for a project related to Cosmos, um, I drafted an initial draft of a manifesto, which uh, I will read out to you. Uh, so bear with me. But um, it's also just the beginning. Um, in the spirit of radical transparency, uh, what I'm doing is I'm sharing everything as it's happening. So all of this is incomplete. They're mostly just concepts. But uh, it's an opportunity and invitation for everyone to participate, if you're so inclined. All right, so here it is. So we are surrounded by fire. When you follow the news and reports, and you find that there's little hope for a future and the future of our children, the system that we have inherited and co-created has become unsustainable. So you'll see here, we're surrounded by fire. Here's the uh, South American continent. And what you see, um, that gray area in the middle is just smoke. So we have now smoke at a global scale. And though our potential is unlimited in the long run, we have forgotten how to live in harmony, and we have robbed ourselves, and we're still ourselves stealing. We have been robbed ourselves, and we are still stealing from the prosperity of future generations for the sake of consumption powered by capitalism. Capitalism is combustion. One's superior ability to accumulate capital begets more capital exponentially. And capitalism is actually the most magnificent, 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 sorry, fire that is engulfing this planet today. So power begets power, oil begets oil, and when left unchecked, capitalism extinguishes itself because it doesn't have a solution. When the power of combustion is harnessed in a macroeconomic design to bring sustenance and harmony and balance to this ecosystem which, in which we all reside, then we have a chance of surviving and fulfilling our collective destiny. Our destiny, that is, to harness the power of the sun. Oh, I think I missed something here. To harness the power of our sun, to reach out to the stars, to spread out and multiply the joy of our being. And as Carl Sagan said, we are made of star stuff. We are a way for the cosmos to know itself. And this stardust just wants to feel finally at home, at peace and in love with ourselves, and at peace with the laws of the universe. While capitalism may appear to be an unstoppable force, the fact of the matter is, capital and private property are constructs of our collective hallucination. It is we the people who enforce property laws, and our minds are open enough to consider different ways of being. And we must, unless we want to find ourselves completely surrounded by the machines of private property and become discarded, as the prophet James Cameron has forewarned us about. We must each use our voices, those that we've always had but never had the opportunity to use, and sing out loud with a thunder that pierces through the fabric of this constructed hallucination and change the tune of our reality for the progression of this song called our humanity. Today, we're given a golden opportunity to harness the gift of computing in our hands and communication at the speed of light to re reimagine where we as a collective society decide to devote our collective focus and power and attention. 
about the nature of free voluntary trade using our tools, we can make this transition entirely peaceful to synthesize a new beginning that transcends the false duality of capitalism versus socialism. Under no authority and with no preconceived notion of nations and the way that we have been considering borders and citizenship. Time is in short supply. We are dealing with an apocalyptic set of unfolding tragedies, a deteriorating, a deteriorating environment, worsening global warming and climate change, soon to be causing the loss of power and electricity, food shortages, worsening economy, through the popping of this global pyramid scheme responsible for the exploitation of people under natural resources. The racket of war for oil and power, which is already disintegrating continental unions. In the greatest superpowers that we see, we see a tolerance and acceptance of darkness, of opacity and unaccountability, and decay into tyranny. So what do we do? We have to figure out what our core values are, the thing that we will not compromise on to lead us to the future. We must not compromise on our core values of transparency, accountability, not just of sustainability, but of regenerative environmental integration. For we are tenders of the earth and of democracy and equality of opportunity and of open-mindedness. By fully committing to our core values, not compromising, of transparency, accountability, environmental stewardship, of providing voice and exit, of democracy, security, of efficiency, of open-mindedness and dialogue and of cooperation, if we truly commit to our core values, we can organize our communities to be decentralized and autonomous yet connected, and from, the votes, and from the votes of the people, with our hands and feet led by our reason, with our attention and associations, and with our words and allegiances, and with radical transparency, the right communities will emerge and prosper. But we have to commit to them. We have to commit to our core values. From the, from the beginning, in order for that to work. So when Moon, I think that's a stepping stone for me. I guess the question is, when Virgo? Virgo is a constellation that took the scales of Libra to the heavens, according to Greek mythology. It's also the largest supercluster in the cosmos, and I believe we are destined to go there. If starting is half the journey, and we would be halfway, when the software that powers our social networking and communications are completely open source and free, with privacy well integrated and enabled by default, and when there exists no one monopoly or an oligopoly but a vast federation of networks speaking a common protocol for interoperability, when the protocols are well-designed enough for multiple implementations to compete, to provide constructive dialogue and information discovery, and also designed to enable our long-term happiness and well-being. When our mobile and desktop devices are completely open and of free design such that anyone can manufacture them, and when we know with near certainty that our devices in our hands are secure and not compromised by any authority. When the world has become so saturated with open source that it becomes the norm, where genuine contributions are rewarded automatically. When our hardware devices are optimized not only for usability, but also for waste reduction and reusability via modularity and to take into account the full cycle of manufacturing to, to disposal in the cost of things rather than design for profits from consumerism. When our social services and public agencies are not held hostage by executive incompetence, 
but are comprised of a network of interoperating, decentralized, autonomous organizations. When we have trust in our institutions by virtue of their openness and transparency and accountability. When our representatives are not merely talking heads on censored media channels, but are people that we know through our exposure accounting for different areas of expertise. When we synthesize these open and free software, hardware, protocols, procedures, and data to make intelligent collective decisions for resource management, and when we enable radically transparent operation, which is necessary for accountability, but also facilitates constructive dialogue, when it all comes together to enable human coordination at all scales, from social groups to corporations and co-ops, to international communities united under a common mission, to states and municipal governments with a public engaged in democracy. When all the people on the earth feel that their voices are heard and that they matter. When our internet infrastructure becomes sufficiently open and resilient, when censorship becomes impossible due to the nature of an incentivized networking protocol, in hardware and fiber optic lines owned and operated by each local community. When our financial system is designed to give power to the people to protect the environment rather than to bow to the hollow. When no authority has the ability to dictate which monetary system one can use by decree, but rather when we the buyers and sellers get to vote with our crypto wallets, what causes to support such as that of a local currency, where inflationary issuance and voluntary tax revenues are used to fund for common infrastructure development, not by virtue of legislation, but in goodwill and social cohesion. When our financial system is designed to heal the people on the planet on which they depend, or have been exploited, and when we and the students of life are given the opportunity to master any aspect of the technological infrastructure on which our livelihoods depend, when we no longer need to expend time and our time and livelihood accounting for our taxes, when all these new systems work together to heal the planet and our sense of greater community bound by love, not hate and fear, then we will be halfway. Um, So Virgo is a new project. If Bitcoin represents capitalism, Libra, these are industry coins, there's a missing half that we need to consider in the context of where we are today. And, and we need more than cryptocurrencies for that. It's, it's about bringing power to the people and empowering us to coordinate together. What we need to do is figure out how to organize and cooperate better to build protocols to help us do this. More importantly, for us to find each other. And we do that by voicing out our own individual manifestos. So if you're interested and what I'm saying resonates with you, please join us for a new chapter and uh, to feel at one with a sense of purpose. Thank you. I can repeat it. Okay. Yeah, don't you think that's just another centralized authority? That really the true would just be absolute Don't you think that the true like would just be to just let the people do what they want and not to actually like tell people what to do? You know, from like a centralized hierarchy sense? Mm-hmm. I yeah, totally agree. I don't think there should be any central authority. Okay. Yeah. Um uh for example, I think uh, Virgo itself uh, maybe 
maybe it makes sense to separate the manifesto from this brand, because Virgo itself is a brand that would be managed by essentially DAO. Um, so that when an organization under this brand is good at making decisions and associations and making good recommendations and builds trust, then you know, it's, it's this entity that has a relationship to the people. But its core value is transparency and providing exit. So it should be easy for anyone to fork it, to create an alternative. Um, and yeah, from the very beginning, um, we're endorsing you know, uh, an open, forkable system. So at any moment, if it feels like there's a potential for capture, then you shouldn't support that. Hi, so you said that everything should be completely decentralized and uh, how everything should be very transparent and based on the opinion of the majority. But uh, in all decentralized cryptocurrencies that we have right now, they, for some reason or the other, end up being pretty much centralized. 80% of them are really owned by 20% of the players. So do you have any ideas on how to avoid that in your cryptocurrency? Virgo is not a cryptocurrency, um, just to clarify. Um, it's, there's no fundraiser. It's not about a token, although maybe in the future there might be some token, but it certainly won't start that way. Um, but to answer your question, how to avoid that? Um, yeah, it's a natural force, right, of capitalism. Uh, it's a natural force of, of wealth. Um, I don't think we can really stop that, because how can you? Can you, you can try to stop it through, uh, I don't know, tax laws all around the world. But eventually, essentially, people have the freedom, naturally, to keep their keys and to associate however they want. I think what we need in order to counter that force you're talking about is to balance this free freedom of token accumulation, say, of free trade with organizations that are well-structured, that are composed of people that are well designed enough to um, allow for the best ideas to bubble up, um, powered by essentially, uh, foundationally, the people. Um, ultimately, uh, the largest organizations, I think, should be powered by democracy. At different scales, you don't need democracy. Um, at the corporate level, for example, there are all kinds of organizations, different control structures that are needed. But when we have an organization that is transparent, that you have access to, that through your contributions you can join, where you can see that it is a well-managed system that is working as designed, then you would, well, I would, feel that it has more legitimacy. And it, uh, through our voices, if we can be part of it, it can be a, a damping factor, something that helps uh, mitigate the forces of capitalism. Sure, but uh, if I own, because say I'm a big player in the technology that Virgo is, and I own 80% of the network, then there is no democracy in that. That's why I wanted to hear your ideas on how to sort of uh, make it more uh, the way that you envision it to be? Thanks. Sure. And so I'll try to answer one more time, um, or add to it. Um, individual coins, I don't think. Um, well, there might be some democratic coins, but I think it's coins, these coins um, should, you know, have their own distribution and their own way of being distributed. And there's going to be a sea of these different distributions um, but at every level, uh, people, their, the community will enforce among each other the adoption of coins that are associated with the right causes, such as, you know, uh, merchants in a town will all want to see each other supporting their local town currency. 
you know, not just one, but hopefully uh, with multiple competitions. So that you can choose the system that you want to be part of. Uh, so you can choose for yourself what you want to support. But uh, I think it's important that there be choices, you know, enough choices. Today we live in a world where, like, we have to depend on a dollar, right? The dollar uh, is issued by central, uh, the banking system. Um, and we, by law, are not allowed, right? Uh, or it's not clear how we can associate and have our own community currency to fund for community infrastructure. But, you know, that's what we need to do. And we have enough, when we have enough choices and there's enough, when we have enough experimentation, then I think through, um, through our voluntary association and all these experimentations, the right systems will emerge that balances capitalism and socialism. How else could it be? I mean, what, are you, what else are you going to do? You know, do it by force? Hi. So uh, you express a vision that is very utopian. And I was wondering, you know, how do you envision Virgo solving, you know, the basic, uh, the basic problem of community organization is the fallen nature of mankind? How do we what? Sorry. That, you know, you basically expressed a vision that's like about, you know, returning power to the people and the people organizing and the people basically making these, you know, collective decisions. But what do we do about the original fallen nature of mankind is that by our very nature as humans, we can't make fully perfect moral decisions. Mm -hmm. Is there any, uh, is, you know, yeah. As long as that exists, it seems like it's intractable for a single, you know, protocol or, a, or a, even a network such as Cosmos to solve, you know, that problem yeah. or it, it, to fulfill that vision. Mm -hmm. I think a good starting point would be if, uh, okay, so the main networks that we use today, like Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, these are all centrally owned and operated and they get to control what is said there and what propagates. So I think uh, the first thing we need is to decentralize that. If we have a decentralized Reddit-like tree discussion system, um, but it's, it was open enough that anyone could innovate on the user experience to enable you know, better features of information discovery, and we design into the system uh, consciously uh, uh, methods and incentives for opposing communities to have a dialogue with each other such that um, there can be progress in a conversation. Uh, then I think not only, well, diff different opinions won't necessarily merge, but we will all learn something. And at least the process of discovery of what we should do will happen faster. But I think first and foremost, in order to do that, everything has to be open so that innovation is permissionless. Awesome. Thanks. I think we, have, we have time for one more question. Anybody? Okay, I think we're good. Thank you, Jay.